one. All righty then. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Healthy Living Live. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Chef AJ, and my guest today is Dr. Dana Simpler. Dr. Simpler is a board-certified internist with over 30 years' experience as a primary care physician practicing in Baltimore, Maryland. And while she's always had an interest in nutrition, it wasn't until 2011 when she read the China study that she had a huge shift, and we're going to talk about that today. But first, welcome, Dr. Simpler. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy to be it's here. My, it's my pleasure. I've known you for so many years and I'm like, why haven't I interviewed this amazing lady? So if, if, if someone lives in the Baltimore or Washington DC area and they wanted to see you as a physician, would that be possible? Yes. And, um, and as I had mentioned to you previously, I'm one of the few plant-based doctors in the Baltimore area that actually runs a regular primary care practice, takes insurance, all that kind of thing. Um, but what I've done over the last few years is for new patients, I'm only accepting new patients that are interested, willing, or already plant-based because there's tons of doctors in town that'll throw pills and procedures at you. But I've spent so much time educating myself on the health benefits of plant-based nutrition. I really want to focus on those folks. And it's um, quite busy because uh, right now I think it's about an eight-month wait for a new appointment. Wow, that's incredible. But do you still have probably patients left over from your older way of practicing I didn't medicine? Take anybody out? Right. No, yeah. Not, that's so nice you don't kick them out. But do you try to convert them a little bit? I do. I try to convert them a lot. I'm a major nag. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That is, that's terrific. So what, you know, the China study seems to be the book that so many people, physicians included, that made them adopt a plant-based diet. So what was it specifically in the book that made you say, you know what, I'm going to do this? Well, I had heard already prior to reading the China study about Dean Ornish's work. So I knew that going on a plant-based diet was very effective for heart disease. And there's another doctor, Dr. Gabe Merkin, who has also been talking about this for the last 40 years. So I had heard about it and I had recommended it to heart patients. But when I read the China study, that was the first time that I heard the connection, not just with heart disease, but cancer, diabetes, autoimmune disease, diverticulosis, gallbladder disease, eczema. You know, the list goes on and on. It was just, it was just staggering to me. Plus, T. Colin Campbell uh, is a, an amazing scientist, and he did the research himself. And one thing that, that bothers me when you're reading medical books is if you're reading a medical book by a doctor that takes a little piece of this doctor's information, a little piece of that research, and then tries to create their own theory about something. A lot of the paleo books are like that. Whereas T. Colin Campbell, he's reporting on his own research. So that's much more powerful because he actually did it himself. Mm -hmm. Right. And he did it without doing it because he was some vegan guy. He was actually doing it to, 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 to find ways for, to get cows to produce more milk. He was doing it as, as somebody that, wasn't, that didn't have a vegan agenda. So that's pretty cool. Right. The research surprised him, too. Yeah, that's a, that's a true scientist and a, and a wonderful guy. And, and, and that book, I think, is really... If, if you haven't read it, you got to read the China study. It's, it's a hard book to read, I think, for regular people. So I, I got it on CD, and that helped a lot just to listen to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, but, but as a doctor, you would think that everybody, every doctor would read the China study, but they don't. Oh, you know, it's, it's so disturbing knowing what I know about the importance of nutrition for good health and how little it's actually used in practice. And it's very disturbing because obviously, as you know, I've been studying and studying this, go to, you know, hours and hours of lectures. And I'll have a patient, a cancer patient, and I'll be saying, you know, I want you to stay away from sugar because sugar is really bad for cancer and animal products will promote cancer. And I'll give them a list of foods that will fight cancer and all this. And they're like, oh, okay great i'll go talk to my oncologist about this and i'm like no no because they'll tell they'll tell your oncologist will tell you that nutrition has nothing to nothing. do with it and they'll tell them really dangerous things like eat whatever you want i'll tell you and here's an example and this will just floor anybody even if you don't know that much about nutrition and health i had a, an 80 year old who uh, had heart disease and I'd been nagging him about his diet, but he didn't really listen. And he ended up with uh, bypass surgery at 84 bypass surgery. And the family all knew what kind of diet I wanted him on because they're all patients also. And so they said to the, the doctor who had just done this $200,000 operation, cutting his chest open in an 84 year old. And, and they said to him, so doctor, 
should um should my dad like stay away from any kind of special food? Should he be on any kind of special diet? And the doctor goes, oh, he's 84. If he wants a piece of cake, give him a piece of cake. I wanted I wanted to strangle that person. So it's okay in the standard medical society to spend two hundred thousand dollars saw open the chest of an eighty four year old to do this bypass surgery. But it's too much to ask that they actually understand the nutrition that got them in that situation. It's it's really sad. It seems like the worst food is 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 served to people that are actually in hospitals. I volunteer at a cancer hospital once a week and I'm, I'm visiting with people with my dog Bailey doing pet therapy and they're having chemotherapy infusions and the lunch cart comes around and they get, this is what they get. They get a choice of sandwiches, all of which have cheese, by the way, you know, Uh turkey and cheese, ham and cheese on white bread. Of course they get chips and they get Coke. And then they get some kind of, you know, candy for dessert. And sometimes they even take a break from their chemo to go out and have a cigarette. And it's like, I feel like, and I can't say anything, by the way, as a volunteer, I'm not Chef AJ anymore. I'm just AJ and I got to zip the lip and I'm like, I know, I know how you feel. So when these oncologists say it doesn't matter, do you think they really believe that Dr. Simpler or they just haven't been taught that it does matter? Um... Well, that's a good question because, you know, of course, each person has their own level of understanding. For many doctors, just like for many people, this is brand new information, even though, you know, it's old information to to me and to you. It's still brand new to a lot of people. So there are doctors that don't really know about it. But then on top of that, there's the doctors who they know about it and they just don't they just don't want to deal with it because they don't want to deal with it for themselves. I'll give you another example. I have a cardiologist. I love this cardiologist. He's a great standard, um, you know, medical care cardiologist, send tons of patients to him. And then as I was becoming more and more knowledgeable on the plant-based diet, I would tell him, I said, you know, we really have to do something about this. And, you know, you, you need to be promoting it and all of this and, and you need to be doing it yourself. And he, um, and he goes to me, he goes, you know, I know you're right but I don't want to be the last man standing. Wow. And I'm like, what? (laughs) People are coming to you to be the last man standing. You know, people want to, people want to live. That's a, that's one of our deepest, strongest drives is to live. And yet here's a cardiologist who even for his own health is not willing to change how he eats, even though he knows perfectly well what what's true and not true but there are more doctors coming around i mean i i every six months or so and a doctor in the area gets in touch with me and they've just started learning about this and they want to know more and i give them some directions to how they can how they can uh apply it to their practices i think the thing that also really uh disturbs me and you and i were talking about this a little yesterday is I understand if a patient doesn't know anything about a plant-based diet, not really, you know, trying to do anything with it. But what's staggering to me is people who know, who they've, they've watched the Esselstyn video. I, I've nagged them to no end. I've even gotten them to buy books and know that they've read them. <laughs> and they still won't follow a plant-based diet despite heart disease, despite diabetes, despite cancers. I mean, people that are very sick, not just somebody like, well, that happens to other people. But no, this is happening to you right now. Yeah, very sad. Well, I would say that's because they're addicted to the foods they're not willing to give up, you know, because if you said to them, Dr. Simpler, hey, you know, as long as you stop eating okra, you know, you're going to be fine. They probably do it, (laughs) you know, that's true. Yeah, I nobody, think nobody has a broccoli addiction, but they... Nope. And, and I'm sure if you told them they needed to give broccoli up, they would be very willing yeah. to. But not, 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 not sugar, fat, and salt and animal products, that's yes. for sure. Yes. Well, and that's another thing that, that does, really does um, just stagger me. And I, and I know you were talking about some of the things that Doug Lyle says about... Because I'm sure people in your listening audience, if they're listening in, they probably are already plant-based or wanting to be plant-based or right. to it or something. But I'm sure there's people listening who want to do it and they just struggle with it. And those are the people that I, I, I don't always know how to reach them. And you were saying Doug Lyle says there's certain personality traits. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, and like you say, there are people that want to do it and still struggle. I mean, we have so many people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program who really want to do it and still have trouble staying the course. And he has a wonderful free video on his website, esteemdynamics.com, called The Perfect Personality. And it doesn't mean that there is a perfect personality, but there are certain traits that if people possess them, they're going to have an easier time. 
lives. So for example, I believe their uh, agreeability, disagreeability, intelligence, everything is on a bell curve, by the way. So there's agreeability, intelligence, novelty seeking, like how open you are to experience, um, conscientiousness, uh, emotional stability. Um, I think there was, I, I think I have them all, but, but the idea is, is that Dr. Goldhammer, Alan Goldhammer is the only one with the perfect personality to be able to do this easily for 40 years because he's <laughs> extremely disagreeable. He's very conscientious. He's highly intelligent. Oh, introverted extrovert was the other one. He's introverted and he's not open to experience. So he can eat broccoli and rice every day. And right. so the thing is, is most of the people I deal with are women and most of them are people pleasers as many women are taught to be. And when you're a people pleaser, it's really hard to go against the grain, the gluten-free grain and do something different. And so that's really, really, right. I think one of the biggest things. And also, you know, how, how, how motivated a person is. And like you say, you have patients that are at death's door that should be highly motivated, but still don't want to do it. So it, it's hard. It, it is It is very hard. It really is. And I know one of the things that made it a lot easier for me was when my husband got on board. Yeah. And um, so that's a big struggle I see with a lot of my patients is they may be the only one in the household doing this. And especially if they've got teenagers and people in the house that they're cooking for, it can really be a struggle. But my husband's story is amazing. So he comes from a long line of people with very bad <laughs> heart disease. His, oh, hey, puppy. His, uh, <laughs> his father died at 44 of a massive heart attack. Then his uh, mother had her heart attack at 58. And his brother, I know I told you yesterday, just recently passed away after a 10-year struggle with heart disease, not really able to stick with the diet. And um, so I was very motivated to get my husband on this diet. And when I first read the China study, I would like talking to him and telling him about it. And he would be like, la, 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 you know, he didn't really care about it, didn't want to deal with it. And then we had a hurricane here in Maryland and everybody was forced to be inside. Nobody was allowed to drive or go to work or anything, but our electricity was on, thank goodness. So I said, honey, please, please just watch this one video. So I had him watch the Esselstyn video, which uh, is beautiful for anybody in the audience with heart disease or you want to send a powerful video to somebody with heart disease. It's Dr. Esselstyn's Make Yourself Heart Attack Proof on YouTube mm. and what um, and it's about an hour long video and he's another one a really brilliant scientific man clearly shows the science behind a whole food plant based diet and preventing and reversing heart disease so my husband sat there for an hour didn't say a word to me I'm looking at my husband looking at the TV looking at my husband looking at the TV and finally the hours up the show's over he turns to me and he goes okay I'm vegan oh and my uh, if it only were that easy for everyone. But again, you know, I'm not saying the people that don't do this are not intelligent, but, you know, I, I met your husband and he's very good looking and he's very highly intelligent. He's more likely to, to do this. Right, right. Yeah. yeah I'll have his to, wife's I'll, a doctor I'll, I'll too, you know. Agreeable or disagreeable. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Jennifer made a comment that her husband was 84 and she was 67 when they went whole food, plant-based, oil-free. He's off all the meds he was given after his heart attack and he's well and he's lost 67 pounds, which just proves it's never too late. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, and, and I was telling you, there is a woman that comes to our Forks Over Knives meetup that has a great strategy for staying on course. She's lost 170 pounds, wow. a whole food plant-based diet, which you can imagine the struggle that's been for her. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, and that's a person. Yeah. Is that she has to either read something or watch something every single day to keep focused on why she's doing the plant-based diet. It makes such sense because as soon as you step outside your door, even yeah. on the TV commercials, you're surrounded by unhealthy food messages. And then you have your own habits and, and uh, addictions bubbling up from the deep brain area. Um, so I, I think that is such a great message. And, and so there's a lot of free ways that people can do that, of course, that they, they can self-teach themselves. So a video like this, Dr. Gregor, Gregor's nutritionfacts.org. Dr. McDougall has wonderful videos. PCRM has wonderful information. Dr. Furman, you can Google all these people and, and watch videos all day long if you want to. Mm -hmm. But I find that the self-teaching works for some people, but not for others. A lot of people need a program where they are supported through. And that's why I love your program and mm -hmm. I, I refer patients to you all the time. And the Food for Life program is another really good one through PCRM, 
people can uh, do PCRM Food for Life and find an ongoing cooking program to teach them how to eat plant-based that's in their area. That's great. Nikki was saying the world does not support a healthy diet. It's true. True. Absolutely true. So, yeah, you're right about the continuing education. I mean, as a physician, you have to get a certain amount of credits every year just right. to keep practicing. And as students of plant-based, I, I think that's so true. Every time I'm walking Bailey, I'm listening to something, one of those like types of those things that you mentioned, either a podcast or a, or a summit or something, because it's, it is, it's, it's sort of like going to church. I mean, people that go to church, they don't say anything necessarily that different every week, but it's, you, you want to be reminded. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that's a great strategy. Does Sharon know this woman that lost 170 pounds? Uh huh. Yeah. That's great. I haven't. I don't think I've met her. But speak as long as we mentioned Sharon, that, that's where I first heard of you. You produce these wonderful immersion programs in Baltimore, and I'd like you to tell the date and and who's speaking in case people are interested in getting tickets. But how did you guys hook up? Because that's a cool story in itself. It it is really sweet. So I had um, in my. Uh, searching for more information on plant-based uh, diet and health benefits, I had contacted Dr. Esselstyn to see if there was some way I could get his book from my office at a cheaper rate. And, and he says, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you come out to my program as a guest? And, um, and he even invited me and my husband to stay at his house, which unfortunately didn't work with our travel plans. But I came out and apprenticed his program and saw how he does it. And the way he does it, he gives his scientific presentation. And then his wife, Anne, does a cooking how-to demonstration. So not too long after that, a neighbor of mine had asked if I would talk at a gifted and talented program for eighth graders. And, um, and the, the theme was dare to be different. So what I did is I highlighted all these doctors like Dr. Esselstyn, uh, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Furman, who were willing to go against the established medical grain and dare to be different. And it turns out this lovely young woman, Tess McRae, comes to this and she was very shy at the time and she came up to me uh, after my talk and says my mom really wants to meet you she's um, she's a, a vegan coach she's a health food coach and I said okay great so we exchanged numbers and um, I talked to Sharon she came over and it was one of those things that you think 10 minutes has gone by and four hours has gone by mm -hmm. you know we just clicked immediately and pretty soon after that, we started doing these programs where I would do the Esselstyn part. You know, I would do a scientific presentation and then she would do the Ann Esselstyn part where she would do a cooking demonstration and talk about how to do it and the ins and outs of cooking plant based. And then from there, we now for this will be our fifth year. We are do this one day immersion where we bring in uh, famous speakers such as yourself. And the one we have coming up this year is November 4th in um, the Columbia area. And we have Dr. Furman is yeah. a big speaker. And Brenda Davis, who um, doesn't have quite as big a name in the general population, but oh my gosh, what a powerful speaker she is. She's a registered dietitian. Yeah. So so knowledgeable. I mean, you, you, you just learn so much listening to her. And then um, Dr. Barnard is going to be there. And then of course yourself. And um, so it's going to be in a, just an amazing um, day. <laughs> it's a really fun event, you know? Yeah. It's uh, and, and we have cooking. There's a, a whole food plant-based restaurant based out of Herndon, uh, Virginia that they, they actually come up and they cater it for us. So the food is all, uh, whole food, plant-based, sugar, oil, salt-free. Really good. Wow, that's so cool. So Carol is the lady you were talking about, and she's watching live. And she said, I sat next to her at the last immersion, and that she's lost more than 170 pounds. So congratulations. <laughs> that's so cool that she's watching. <laughs> yeah, Pam is saying her family doesn't support whole food, plant-based. Mother died at 50 from a heart attack. Three sisters prefer to be on meds. Cousins and other relatives say it's just the genes, and nothing can be done about it. She's an outsider in her own family. So let's address that thing first, that it's the genes. That's what a lot of people say. Sure. And, um, and I love the saying, genes load the gun, diet pulls the trigger. My husband's family is an exact example. I mean, they have a terrible genetics for heart disease, but 
you can choose one path or the other. And uh, sadly, my brother-in-law did, did not do so well, was just not able to get himself to be on a plant-based diet, even though we did pretty significant interventions after one of his many hospitalizations. We came over there and forced him to watch the Esselstyn video. I mean, we sat there with him and made him watch it. We brought in bags of groceries cooked food there, had him eat the food in front of us to show him. I said, can you eat this? He goes, yeah, I could eat this to try to make it clear that, that it is possible to eat a plant-based diet. But unfortunately, he just couldn't give up his fried chicken. He couldn't give up his mission barbecue. And yeah. sadly, two weeks ago, lost his life to heart disease. And so 62 sad. years old, 63. Especially so when it really is preventable and largely yeah. reversible. Yes. Yes. But I have another patient who um, knew nothing about the whole food plant-based diet. He had a small heart attack. They put a stent in and then he started reading about it after the stent was in. He's very sorry he got the stent now. He started reading about it and uh, discovered the whole food plant-based diet, discovered me. And he is so strict and so uh, good with his plant-based diet and his exercise. He just won, he's 70 years old, he just won a national pole vaulting contest for, uh, for his age group. There are, these, there are these athletes who continue to compete into their 80s and 90s at these national events, and he just won the nationals. That's amazing. That's Somebody amazing. with a heart condition. So how can that be? Because he's taking care of himself. Are you on plant docs or veg docs .com yeah. or how do most people find you from referrals or that usually that way. And, and, um, that's a, a good thing. If somebody is looking, there's not that many, but usually in each area, there's one or two. <laughs> and, um, so if you're looking for a plant-based doctor, yeah, it's that veg docs, um, uh, there's a, a vegan doctors. Um, but if you Google it, it usually will come up and you can try to find somebody in your area. Um, well, that's incredible that there's an eight month waiting list to, uh, to see you. So congratulations on that. Well, I guess as your patients that aren't following the plant-based diets die off quicker than expected, then there'll be more room for those <laughs> who want to eat well, healthy. I try, I still try to do the best I can with the standard medical care for them. I right. Know, yeah. Sure. Shirley's asking where you are. She, she's in Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Oh, uh, Pam wants to know if you take on long distance patients. She can't find a plant-based doctor in her area. I don't really have a mechanism for that right now. I'm sorry. Um, there probably is somebody that does. Right. Okay. We'll find it for her. Very. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people, the, the struggle is because the family doesn't want to do this. And, you know, we, we wear different clothes than our family often and have different interests and listen to different music. And yet we're able to get along. But somehow when it comes to food, it, 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 it's such a big deal. Yes, and I'm sure you know the answer to this because it makes that person feel bad about themselves. You know, yeah. just like somebody who's um, going to have a, a bunch of donuts, they want you to have some donuts with them. Or if they're having a yeah. bunch of beers, they want you to have a bunch of beers with them because then, then you don't feel as bad about whatever your vice is. Right, exactly. Misery loves company. <laughs> yes, yes. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. And, you know, you're talking about uh, uh, Carol, who always listens to something in the plant-based realm. I really admire that you're all, I mean, I've seen you at so many conferences, not just the one you put on and are speaking at. I've seen you at the PCRM conference. I've seen you at the Plantrition conference. So you're, you're continuing to always learn. Well, and that's another piece of good news. Let's just take the uh, Plantrition project. That was started, I went to their very first conference, Dr. Scott Stoll started this conference and it's designed for physicians and other health educators. So there's a lot of health coaches and people like that there. The first year, I think there were maybe 250 people at his conference, that was five years ago. And each year it grew, then it was 350, 400, 500. This past year, they had either 800 or 900 people. And these are all doctors, health educators. So that's really amazing news. And fortunately, they're designing those courses that they count towards my continuing medical education. As you were mentioning, when you're uh, any, any kind of professional, you have to get so many continuing medical education credits or you, you can't keep your license. And they've designed these classes that we can use those classes for our continuing medical education, which is great. Yeah. How much nutrition were you taught in medical school? I mean, not meaningful nutrition, 
nothing meaningful. You know, we, we learn things like um, how to do the hyperalimentation if somebody can't eat at all and you're giving nutrition through the vein because they're teaching you how to prescribe it. You know, it's nothing really about like, this is what you should tell people to eat. And, and the funny thing is in my journal articles all the time, it'll say, uh, or, or in guidelines, it'll say, start such and such medicine after lifestyle interventions have failed, but they never tell you what the lifestyle interventions are, you know? Yeah. So unless you have a doctor that's really gone out of their way to educate themselves the doctor doesn't know much more than what they've read in the newspaper, uh, seen in a magazine, you know, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, it's very sad. Right. It's like those commercials that say when diet and lifestyle aren't enough, they're always enough, but you actually have to do them, you know? Yes. And somebody has to actually talk about what they are. What are and they? doesn't, doesn't it take longer to do lifestyle medicine and you guys aren't compensated. You, you know, you guys have to, I mean, you, it takes a lot longer to explain this to people than it does to write a prescription for yes. Lipitor. Yes, it really does. Um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things I could be doing that would make a lot more money. Yeah. Um, yeah but well, you have to have really a passion. About, feel really good about this. And for the people that listen, it's it's just amazing. In fact, I just saw a patient today. She's another great story. It's a young African-American woman who probably like three years ago, she came down with this worst autoimmune condition. And um, I take care of her entire family, all her aunts, her grandfather, take care of all these people. And uh, she came to me and, you know, we did the whole rheumatology workup. I sent her to the rheumatologist. And of course, they wanted to put her on very toxic drugs, which is what the rheumatologists have in their armament right now that cripple your immune system, which has all kinds of fallout. And, um, uh, at this, uh, around that same time, I had just been at the plantrician conference and heard Dr. Brooke Goldner, who's a medical doctor who cured herself of lupus, which is a terrible autoimmune condition, and came up with a whole program and uh, wrote a book called Goodbye Lupus. And so I, I told the patient about that. And I just saw her um, today. She came in today for a follow-up. And she's been following Dr. Goldner's program. She's on no autoimmune medication. She's on no immune crippling medications. She doesn't feel perfect, but I'm guessing she probably doesn't follow it perfectly. <laughs> but um, but but she's nowhere near as incapacitated as she was. She's a um, she's a postal worker, so she has to walk a route carrying yeah. uh, letters. So for somebody with lupus to be able to have that kind of a job, you can tell that something's working. That's incredible. What what do most people see you for as a primary doctor? Because I read somewhere that something like nine out of 10 physician, physician visits are for something that is related to lifestyle, either because the person smokes too much or drinks too much or eats too much or doesn't get enough exercise or doesn't right. sleep well. Right. Uh, and I would say that's probably true for, for almost every medical profession, except maybe orthopedics. Um, that, that it's all diet related. So the big ones in internal medicine, as I'm sure people already know, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, um, allergies. Oh, that's another thing. I'm sorry, I'm jumping topics here. But one that's thing okay. I want your audience to know, if there's nothing else that you'll give up, if you can give up dairy, Dairy is really bad for the GI tract. It's really bad for the allergy sinus system. So I have cured so many people of their asthma and allergies or significantly lessened it, even if we haven't cured it, by having them get rid of dairy. And I had one woman came in. She was on one of these heavy biologic drugs for ulcerative colitis. And she came in for something unrelated to that. And, um, and I said, well, have you ever tried going dairy-free to see because she was continuing to get these flares, even on these very potent drugs. And she said, um, she goes, no, nobody ever told me to go dairy free. And I said, well, you know, you really should try it and see what happens to your ulcerative colitis. And of course, happy ending to this story. I saw her a year later for an unrelated condition. And, um, and she had had zero flares the entire year and her doctor told her if she went an entire year without a flare that he was going to take her off of the biologics. So, uh, you know, dairy is a really powerful one. That's incredible. 
You mentioned your cardiology colleague that knew that it was the right thing to do but couldn't or wouldn't do it. But I imagine as a physician who's been practicing for 30 years, you probably have a lot of colleagues that are medical doctors, possibly even friends. Were there any that, like, when you read the China study in 2011, did you, like, just automatically buy this book for everyone for Christmas? Or (laughs) were there people in your circle of either colleagues or friends that were medical doctors that that were like, oh, yeah, Dana, I'm going to do this. You're right. I do have one. It's funny that you asked that because there's Dr. Rosemary Olivo is another plant-based doctor in the Baltimore area. And we sit next to each other at Grand Rounds every week. And um, and I was telling her when I went out to the Esselstyn, um, I, I was telling her that I was going and she was very interested. And when I got back, I started sending her some information and she educated herself. She's come to the uh, PCRM conferences down in DC. And so she now is uh, 100% on board. And of course, you talk it up as much as you can, if anybody willing to listen. And then when I was in South America, I did a medical mission to South America, and it was a cancer focused mission in Colombia, South America. And what we did is um, it was a, a teaching hospital where we were doing our mission and there were medical students there. So I did an entire talk on the connections between food and cancer. And, um, and the medical students were just, you know, wrapped. They were so interested. And um, PCRM actually has a whole food for life packet, a vegetarian packet in Spanish. And they gave them to me and I put them in my suitcase. They were heavy as all get out. I had all these, I had like 200 pamphlets, handing them out to all the medical students and they just were thrilled with it. So I don't know, maybe there'll be a whole movement in Cali, Columbia now. <laughs> That's cool. That's so cool. So oh, this, is, this is it's somewhat of a medical question. I know you can't give personal medical advice, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because it seems to happen all the time. And so maybe you could address it generally. So let's see where it was. Um, yeah. Claudia said this, that why are, when she went whole food plant-based, her triglycerides going up. I see a lot of people, especially if they have weight to lose, that their numbers sometimes get worse before they get better. Have you ever seen that where their cholesterol and their triglycerides go up as they're losing weight? Hmm. Um, that's an interesting question. I can't say that I've seen that as a recurring pattern. I, mm-hmm. I will say that I had a patient who was really strictly following the whole food plant-based diet. And I believe she was telling me the truth. She, uh, she's probably 110 pounds dripping wet and, um, and would, you know, detail me what she was eating. And yet we couldn't seem to get her cholesterol into those numbers that are safe for not having heart disease. And she has a strong family history for heart disease. And so she was at our most recent immersion and asked Dr. Esselstyn, what is going on? Because he, he was one of our speakers last uh, last year. And he said something interesting I hadn't heard before. But he said that it's it's not a number that causes the heart attack. It's the clogging of the arteries that causes a heart attack. And that there are some people whose bodies will keep a higher cholesterol. It's just sort of natural for their body. But if you are truly following a whole food, plant-based SOS free diet, that it doesn't even matter what the numbers are, because in his experience, the numbers go down beautifully, don't go down beautifully, you still don't have a heart attack. And that's really the key thing is that's what you're trying to do is prevent a heart attack. Right. So this this is okay. Well, that's cool. They're they're talking about triglycerides, but those are fats in the blood, right? Yeah, triglycerides are one. Usually when you see it, it's your total cholesterol, your LDL, HDL and triglycerides, they usually all run together. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that like what you said, if they're really eating this diet, then they shouldn't worry. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You've ever done like group, those group visits. I see a lot of plant-based doctors out here doing that because it's just easier because it's, it's like, like when you write a book, you only do it once and everybody, but but by the way, what about a book? I'd love it with your name simpler. I mean, simple, you know, simpler cures, something like that. I should do that. Maybe, maybe when I have time, I don't know. (laughs) So I still work so much. So, right. Um, but the, uh, what was your question before that? Well, I, I've seen a lot of the doctors doing like these oh, group, group visits, visits, like in yeah. Kaiser, because it's, it's really, it's very time consuming if you have to explain the same thing yes. over and over. So at Kaiser, what Dr. Steve Lewenda, who I'll be interviewing does is he has like a program where everybody's together. So. Yes, I did do that. I did that one time for a series with a group of diabetic patients and it actually worked really well. 
in terms of um, what, what we did is they would have like a teeny mini visit with me that lasted literally a minute and a half. And then the rest of their visit was with the group. But you had to have that one-on-one -on -one in order for it to be able to be billed as an office visit. It's they're very strict with how these things are done. Right. So, um, but then we, you know, so we get everybody's blood pressure and blood sugar and, you know, real quick, quick, quick visit with me. Then we would walk together down to uh, a church hall where I had prepared a video for them to watch. And, um, and ahead of time, I'd asked everybody for a certain amount of money for food because I was going to make lunch for them. And then I would do a cooking demonstration and we would all eat together. And it, it really did work great while the program was going on. Wow. But it was it was kind of tough on my schedule. So right. I so I didn't do a second one, but I really should. It's just it's very time consuming when you're in a standard, you know, I understand practice. I wish there was a way for you because we have doctors here that are vegan themselves, but can't like they, they just they can't they don't know how to create the same kind of you know, I, I, like lifestyle, they, they just can't do it with, because like my, my doctor who's vegan said, stop sending me people. It takes too long because there's nothing wrong with them. And if they fart, they think it's like the biggest deal. And we got to <laughs> talk for like 20 minutes, but I wish there was a way to construct it so that you guys could be compensated fairly in the way you are yeah. compensated now, but for doing this kind of work. And you're right. Like what I see too, Dr. Simpler, when people are in groups, they, they thrive. I, I, the ultimate weight loss program is run online, but I do it in person in Los Angeles about two times a year more if I'm in town and the people do so well when they're in a group and they're meeting yes. every week but I, I I don't know how to construct that without having to stay home for all year and then I, I can't do my job either but but there is something very powerful about groups and group support it really is it really is and and the, the those patients who were in that program to this day, uh, have a kinship with me that they wouldn't have had with another doctor. And if, and if they see the other patients in the waiting room, of course, with them. So it can be really powerful. There's another really wonderful program called the CHIP program. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's it's not covered by insurance. And, you know, people always want everything to be covered by insurance. Right. <clears throat> Which, you know, there's a philosophy around that. People yeah. think their health insurance should cover all these things. But if you think about it, you're Car insurance doesn't cover a new set of tires and the tune-ups and all those kinds of things. It just covers if you have an accident. So people really need to invest in their health and spend some time, like whether it's your program, which is excellent. There's also live-in programs. Dr. McDougal has a 10-day mm -hmm. live-in program that's transforming uh, people on the East Coast. I just had a patient go down to the Hippocrates uh, Clinic down in Florida, and uh, she did fantastic. It really helped get her set. She's a very bad food addict, and it really helped get her focused. Wow. So, and there's True North in Santa Rosa, which is right. available all the time. So uh, Gloria said, could you please give a little bit more information on your program that's taking place November 4th? Maybe like where they could buy tickets and how is it structured? I know that there's going to be some really fun uh, activities going on and there's lunch, of course. Okay. All right. So the name of the program is called Eat Well, Stay Well, and it's going to be on November 4th. And we don't have tickets up live yet, but they're supposed to be very soon. I know Sharon and her husband are working on the tickets right now. Um, but if you go on Eat Well, Stay Well, that's Sharon's website. And on her website has events. And you can check back and see when uh, when tickets go online. And we usually sell out pretty quickly. Uh, last year, I think we were sold out two months before the event. So it's a good idea to try to get get tickets as soon as possible. But we're, we're going to have um, Dr. Furman is going to be giving two talks. One wow. On food and cancer and one on fast food genocide. And that's a very interesting concept, this fast food genocide, because it's not just going to McDonald's and KFC and that kind of fast food, but all the fast food that we all, a lot of us were raised on, which is the convenience foods that you buy at the grocery store to make your quick, whatever you're going to eat, your mac and cheese and all those kinds of things. So, it's a, and the, the evidence of the, the death rates since we've been eating like that are terrible in the obesity rates. Um, 
Brenda Davis is a registered dietitian who is extremely knowledgeable on the correct way to do a plant-based diet. And uh, Chef AJ is going to be doing a cooking demonstration. And then you're, you're doing a talk also. Do you remember what your topic's going to be? I don't know. I didn't know I was doing a talk, but uh, maybe I can talk about what it's like to be friends with Sharon McRae. That'd be a really, <laughs> that would be more of a comedic presentation. I'm just yes, teasing. Would- Dave, Dave. Tess, Marcy, we're just kidding. I know she's watching. I'm just fun of her. So in 2011, when you got your husband to, uh, well, you didn't get him. He actually chose himself to do this after watching the Dr. Esselstyn video. You also have three children. They're all grown now. Did they get on board? Are they on board? And how did that work? Right. So we've got a, a bit of a mix. So, and here's an idea that family, if, if, for people in your audience, if you have loved ones that you're living with or close with that you want them to, I mean, you'd love for them, of course, to be becoming whole food plant-based, but what you mainly want them to do, in my opinion, is not sabotage you. Right. So what we said to our adult children is I, I really want you to, and it was the Esselstyn video because they know about the heart history with the family. And of course, that's their blood as well. So they need to be concerned for themselves. And I said, um, I'm not telling you, you have to eat this way, but I need you to watch this video so that you understand what we're doing and you're not ridiculing us or undermining us. I want you to get it. And so they all watched the video. And uh, my youngest daughter, who's graduating from medical school in three weeks, <laughs> she, um, she went 100%. She's been completely plant-based for years now. My son, well, they're, they're all perfectly happy to be plant-based when they're in our home. So nobody ever complains about the food we're cooking in the home. Um, and my son and daughter, they, they do probably 60, 70%. They're probably not perfect with it. But at that age, and then none of them have at this point any medical problems that they have to be 100%. I'm, I'll take that. You know, I'll take that they're trying and they're open to it and they never give us a hard time in our house. So that That's would be a good strategy for, for the folks listening. Yeah, I love that. They, that, that. they don't have to do it, but they have to respect your decision to do it and not sabotage you. That That's brilliant. Thank you. But interesting that the one that's becoming a doctor is the one that's doing it. Yes, and she's going to be out in your way. She's going to be at Cedar sinai Oh, my God. that's so. Well, when you visit her, you can come for dinner. I'm about 20 minutes from Cedars. Oh, okay, great. That's where my plant-based doctor practices is Cedar sinai Oh. That's okay. incredible. So there's if, a plant-based. So I, I mean, is she going, do you know what specialty she's chosen yet or she hasn't chosen? She's doing internal medicine. Oh my God, that's the hardest because you got to actually care about the people. <laughs> you you got to see them more than once. Oh, I always thought I'd be an anesthesiologist because then I never have to, you know, well, they're that's asleep. What her, boyfriend's gonna do. her boyfriend's doing anesthesia. At yeah, in my finger, you know, you see him one time, they're asleep the whole time. Right. And then right. you don't have to ever see him again, you know? You know, Dean Ornish is going to be speaking at Cedar Sinai um, in uh, May. Yeah. I did not know that. When? Yeah. No, tell me about it. That's fantastic. Uh, I'd have to look it up for you. I just know it's in May because I was looking on his website and it was such a shame because she's not there till June. If he was there in June, she would see him. But he's going to be speaking at Grand Rounds. So he'll be speaking to the entire uh, whatever medical doctors are willing to show up anyway. He's wow. going to be doing Grand Rounds at uh, Cedar sinai in May. That's But so then it's Grand Rounds. It's not open to the public. Well, they probably they probably don't look to see who comes in. So you probably could just walk in. Seriously? Do you know what it is? I would. I have a white coat. Ah, uh, I mean, I'd have to look it up. I can't remember. Oh, that, that would be incredible. Yeah. That would be absolutely incredible. But back to Grand Rounds, the thing that's pretty impressive about Dean Ornish giving the Grand Rounds there. So Grand Rounds is a big lecture, not for the student doctors or the resident doctors, but for all the practicing doctors. So every age doctor comes to Grand Rounds, and that's part of our continuing medical education. So there's one at the hospital where, uh, where I work out of that's once a week. I've been going to it for 30 plus years. And the number of grand rounds in all those years, you can add them up once a week for 30 years. The number that have been on, on nutrition is somewhere between zero and two. <laughs> I, I think it could be zero, but I think there might have been a couple that snuck in there that were about nutrition, but nothing on plant-based nutrition. And I have tried so many times to say, 
Dr. Barnard is right down the road. He could come give grand rounds. Dr. Greger is right down the road. He could come give grand rounds. And I can't get traction. I just can't get traction. It must be frustrating for you. I mean, I know I it's frustrating for me just as a layperson. But if this was my job and my colleagues were either ignorant or, or even opposed to it, I, I, I think I would be incredibly frustrated. It's, it's very frustrating. And, um, you know, hopefully, well, one thing that I think is in our favor for the plant-based movement is the young population, I, I forget the exact statistic, but it's something like 13 or 17% of young adults are vegan, predominantly for env environmental reasons, animal rights reasons, sustainability reasons, but they quickly learn about the health benefits as well. So I think since that population is is growing and will be coming into positions of power that this will this will get uh, the word will get out more and my daughter who's just in the process of finishing medical school they actually had a whole set of modules on nutrition the problem was that they don't test for that on the boards the board exams don't ask for nutrition um, questions. So the students were given to it kind of like a pass fail thing. They just kind of had to breeze through it. They didn't actually have to study it or memorize it or take a test on it. And, you know, when you have somebody that's learning everything that you have to learn in medical school and you go, now here's this one that you can kind of breeze through. Well, of course, it's not going to get a lot of attention. If it was tested, if it was on the test, <laughs> they would all learn it. Oh, but hopefully that'll continue to change. Yeah. So you went plant-based in 2011 and your husband followed you soon after. I'm guessing that might have been like in your 50s, if I'm allowed to ask a woman yes. her age. The yes. reason I'm asking is because, it, like we said, it's never too late. But you, I'm guessing you were probably pretty healthy already. But did you notice any difference either in your weight, your appearance, your health? from? Because you made the change not because you were sick, because it, it was clearly evidence-based thing to do. Right. right. And I didn't, you know, if, if I was telling other people to do it, I didn't want to be a hypocrite and not be doing it myself. So, right. you know, I wanted to walk the walk or walk the talk. So, um, so pretty quickly, you know, when I first started doing it, there weren't huge changes physically. But when my husband got on board and at that point, then it was very easy for me to go 100 um, percent. We both lost weight right away. We had to get rid of all. And he wasn't heavy to begin with. He's 6'3", and he was 205, but he went down to 185, which was his wow. high school weight. And all these XL sweaters that he had and shirts, we had to get rid of all those and go to the L's. Um, and, and I lost weight as well. Um, the biggest thing that I noticed is... Um, when you when you get out, when you're over 50 and you get out of bed in the morning most people creak a little bit you're a little stiff you're a little creaky and you know it's just like all right well that's just normal when you're when you're over 50 well when i went on the plant based diet um more strictly i pop out of bed nothing hurts nothing aches not, not, nothing stiff um i just played two competitive tennis matches Sunday night and Monday night work. So speaking of Monday, I worked a full day Monday at work, got home, went to the tennis court, played, uh, you know, a two hour tennis match. I feel fine. Get up the next day. Feel absolutely fine. Nothing. So, nice. um, so that's the beauty for people that don't really think there's anything wrong with them right now, but they probably do have that little bit of stiffness. And then if I do go through a period where maybe I'm losing a little strictness for one reason or another, vacation, temptation, something gets me a little off track, I can feel it in my fingers. They start to stiffen up. And so anybody with osteoarthritis, you know, everybody gets told osteoarthritis is just an old age arthritis and that all you can do is take Motrin for it. We don't have any way to, to fix it. People with osteoarthritis can get quite a bit of relief with a whole food plant-based diet. It really works. Absolutely. So how did you even hear about the China study in 2011 to know to even pick it up and read it? Well, it was on, it was audible on an audible site and um, I was just flipping through and it popped up as, as maybe a bestseller or something. I'm like, hmm, that looks interesting. So I totally stumbled on it. Nobody told me about it. It was <laughs> just. That's happy. so great. Yeah. So then you read the book and then did you literally go home and throw out all the dairy or did you say, well, let's finish this cheese and then next week? And, and how did you transition just practically? Like, like, cause were you a good cook before you're a good cook now plant-based? How did, how did that, how did that look for you? Um, 
Well, mine was definitely more gradual because I was on my own with it. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, if I was fixing something that my husband was eating also, then it probably had meat or dairy or something in it. But he travels a lot. And so anytime I was on my own, I would choose whole food plant-based. And I started noticing, um, yeah, I've, I've um, had all my breakfasts have been whole food plant-based. And then I'm like, yeah, all my lunches have been whole food food plant-based. Dinner, of course, is the biggest struggle for most people. And then all of a sudden I go, wow, I went three days in a row without any animal products. And then it just went from there. And then when my husband got on board, then it was, you know, very easy. You know, you can go go a month at a time, no problem. Right. <laughs> so. Well, I think if people would get either a crock pot or an instant pot, dinner doesn't have to be a struggle because yeah. they could just throw things in and Voila, they've got dinner. So do, do, you, do you still cook even with your busy schedule of tennis and travel and seeing patients? Do you still have time to cook meals? Yes, yes. I, I, I try to cook at home as much as possible. Um, some of my easy things I like to do is just roast vegetables. So I'll have a pan of roasted potatoes, roasted cauliflower, roasted Brussels, fill a plate up with that. That's, that's a super easy one. Um, I have from the Eat to Live cookbook, I've got this killer mushroom mushroom stroganoff recipe that I love. And so I, and that brown rice do a nice ring of broccoli, nice pile of brown rice and this mushroom stroganoff on top of that. And, um, and it's, it's easy to do um, spaghetti type dishes because you just chop up mushrooms and turn them into, you know, put them in a, a, a pasta sauce of some kind and put that over needle noodles. That's really easy. Um, baked potatoes. I'll cook a baked potato and then I'll saute down um, mushrooms, onions, maybe some spinach, break open the potato, and then that becomes a loaded. Yep, me potato. too. I love stuffing things into a potato. Yeah. I do the same thing, but with kale. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you eat the same thing for breakfast every day? Um, not always. I kind of mix it up a little bit. I'll do like a granola with berries and um, almond milk. Uh, lunch, if I don't have, I have a lentil soup that I make myself in my Instant Pot if I if I've had time to make it, then I've got in a bunch of bowls and I take that to work with me each day with a piece of fruit. If I don't have time to make it myself, the Amy's low sodium vegetable lentil soup is pretty, pretty close to perfect. I mean, it's got a little bit of extra sodium in it, but it's that's sure. very good. And, and I recommend that for people that either can't cook or um, they're on the go and they need something. I was just talking to a patient today who's trying to eat better. And he's a store manager at a, a shopper's uh, food store. And I said, well, um, you know, that Amy's lentil soup there on your shelf there, right? And he goes, oh, yeah, I know that one. I go, microwave that at lunch, have that for lunch and let's give up the ham sandwiches, you know? And he's like, yeah. all right, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. But so do you have a big, I've never been to your office cause I'm always there on the weekend, but do you have a big staff? Like, like maybe a receptionist, a nurse, like how big is your staff? Just two, two um, secretaries and me, a medical assistant, a secretary and me. And um, do they my, eat like my you? Waiting, my waiting room has um, posters of uh, roasted vegetables, and I've got a big sign on the wall, the, the Hippocrates one, um, the, the food is thy medicine and medicine is thy food. I've got that up on the wall. Uh, if you go into the exam rooms, there'll be a, um, a big picture of blueberries, a big picture of spinach. So I try to use some subliminal things. Subliminal marketing, yeah. Is, is your staff of two plant-based? Are we able to reach them at all? On and off, they, you know, they, they do well and then not so well. You know, I don't make it a requirement for working for me. <laughs> wow. You're, you're, you're a nice person. So do you still see patients in the hospital? Do you still go hos to hospitals? I don't do that anymore. No. Did you do that at all when you were plant-based? Uh, no. Okay. The, the reason I ask is my, my plant-based doctor, he he's almost gets ridiculed at the hospital. They, you know, they call him the crazy vegan doctor. And I was wondering if yeah. you got any pushback from any of your colleagues. Well, I, I do just from the sense, like, uh, as I was mentioning, so trying to get the grand rounds to have something on plant-based. When I went and saw Esselstyn's, um, went to his program, I had said to the, the head of medicine there, I said, when I get back, let me put on a program and I'll explain the, the whole plant-based program. And, um, and they're like, no, not scientific enough. Just, just wouldn't just it's it's just staggering how is it not scientific enough i don't know it, it, what it well basically what it is they won't say it and maybe they don't even believe in their heart of hearts it's true but it just doesn't make money 
if, if it doesn't make money, then the hospitals aren't interested in it. Well, that would make sense why Kaiser is the only place that's embracing them because they, they actually make money when patients are healthy, not exactly. when patients are sick. Exactly. Oh yeah. boy. That's just, don't get me started. I get so frustrated and I'm not a doctor, but I just, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's just been wonderful talking to you. Anything you want to add or, or inspire yeah, people? With? Or how, how can they find, maybe you could talk to them about how do they talk to their doctor? Like if they, I, I encourage everyone to find a plant-based doctor. Like you said, there's websites like vegdocs.com, plant-based doctor, I think. But some people live in places where it's not an option. I always recommend they do a medical uh, a, a consult, like a, a Skype or phone consult with one of the True North medical doctors. It's less than $100. But everybody needs a local doctor. How do they talk to them? Because not, not every doctor is, is embracing of this way of eating for their patients. And not only not ever, most are not. So Right. Well, I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for... I think the best advice when you're a plant-based individual and you're going to the doctor, just don't even bother talking to them about diet because they're going to either confuse you, ridicule you, tell you you're wrong, um, undermine you in some way. And, and, and if you, if you're really following a plant-based diet, then you have read enough and know enough, you know more than they do. So just don't even bring it up. Or if you bring it up and they dismiss it, just don't bring it up again. Oh, but I did want to mention um, a couple of things, a couple of blood tests that people need to be sure that they're looking at when you're plant-based. I think most people know about the B12. So do be sure that you're taking B12 and having your B12 monitored. Um, Iodine, if you are truly salt-free, you can become iodine deficient in this country. And so you need to have your iodine level checked and, and or just make sure you start taking a supplement, 150 MCGs of iodine, 150 MCGs is an adequate replacement so that you won't get deficient in that. And if you want to kind of take a multivite, which we don't recommend multivites in general anymore, but Dr. Furman has put together a a vegan multivite that addresses the issues of things that you might be lacking in a plant-based diet. The K2, which is another bacteria-borne vitamin that has the iodine, the B12, it has your vitamin D, and a smattering of other healthful things and doesn't have things that we now know are dangerous in multivites but are still in there, like vitamin A and vitamin E, which we now know promote cancer, but you'll still see them in one-a-days and all these other vitamins. Right. Would it be acceptable to just eat like a little bit of kelp and dulse a few times a week if somebody didn't want to take an iodine supplement? Yeah, as long as they're monitoring their level and making sure that they're actually And getting- to monitor an iodine level, is this a blood test or a, a blood urine test? test? Blood test. It's a blood test. What what are the symptoms of iodine deficiency? Because it's not talked about it's not talked about a lot. Right. When you're when you get a new patient and you're explaining to them the benefits of going plant based, do you try to get them right away to do the do it the correct way, like whole food plant based, no oil, or do, or do you just say just don't eat dairy or have a little vegan? How do you approach this, like more of a transitional way or or all the way? Well, I don't know where she went, but we were going to end soon anyway. 
So thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Healthy Living Live with Dr. Dana Simpler. If you'd like to meet her in person along with Sharon McRae, please come to the Eat Well, Stay Well Immersion Program, which is taking place in Columbia, Maryland on November 4th. And I will be presenting there along with Dr. Joel Furman, Dr. Neil Barnard, and Dr. Brenda Davis. Not Dr. Excuse me, not Dr. Brenda. She should be a doctor. Brenda Davis, RD. She's so smart. She should be a doctor. So thank you guys so much. And I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy taste delicious. Thanks, everyone. <music>